Morning guys, Craig Tomkinson here. Um, yeah, there's my boat there in the background. And um, under heat here, I've got to uh, pull my um, brake calipers apart and rebuild them. On this trailer I run, uh, see the springs over there, I run uh, HJ75 front springs and uh, Toyota spindles and bearings, Toyota brakes and um, Toyota disc brakes. But uh, yeah, I've done them. I've done the um, calipers. I rebuilt, put new seals and buckets. The seals inside are fine. It's just the uh, the boots bugger up on them after a few years. It, on, a, on the front of the Toyotas, they last really well because you use them all the time. And they stay they're pretty well protected in there, and they get they dry they stay dry for some reason. But on the boat trailer, they get a lot more stuff around them. And then because you only use them every now and then, the actual boots around the uh, pistons they perish, and then let the dirt in, and then that seizes the pistons. So yes, yeah, so I'm just to uh, pull this wheel off. Actually, I'm going to um, uh, get some stands out, and uh, I'll pull them apart. So I'll switch this off. And I'll get set up and then I'll start filming again. Alright, oh, no, so I've, uh, I've jacked that up, put a, a stand under it. And uh, because they're V shaped, I've put a little bit of thin bit of timber in there. And it just sort of sits on the flat underneath there better. Now, if you haven't if you haven't done this before, before you jack your wheel up, you loosen your nuts on the ground on your thing, you don't untow them right off, but then you undo your nuts, just loosen them off a bit. Now I'll rip this wheel off, actually I'll fit the other, this one under the other side and then I'll show you what I'm, I'm about to take apart. This is my old tinny, I've got, I'm getting it ready, I don't know if I'm doing a trip, I'm doing a trip either up to Gove or um, up to Cape in a few weeks, so I'm just doing a bit of maintenance on the trailer, like she's got new tyres, I just want to check the bearings when I've got her up. I know she's got good right. disc pads in her, because I only just got a um, Roadworthy done on this trailer. A few months ago I was going to sell it, then I changed my mind. And then uh, I've, oh, since then I've done a couple of trips around here and there with it, and then noticed that the rubber boots are popping off the pistons on the calipers, so do them now. It's about, I think they're about $40 a kit each side, so I'll pull them apart. And, Put them back together and at that same time i'll put new brake fluid through her, flush the system with new brake fluid and then if i decide to go this trail is ready and uh yeah it's a good thing to do i do the toyota every time i do put new brake disc pads in the toyota or i flush the system there too or a trip up north i get in with a syringe and i suck the uh, old stuff right out the bottom of the container but this one here i just got enough and i'll just change it right over um, yeah, so all right, I put this uh, other stand, this one here, on the other side, get him in position, sit nice on the flat. I should, I should lay a bit more concrete out here, but I'll, oh, it's all to do with money these days. I might not be going anywhere yet, but the price of fuel, my lord, is she going up? All right, I'll just switch this off and go and do that. Okay, these things are good. Just a little adapter like that, goes up to half inch. I know a lot of people have probably seen them. Just uh, use your Makita to rip the wheels off. I've been using these. Oh, bought that seven or eight years ago before I moved here. Now, just for a little bit extra protection. Oh, which side did I just slide him in there? Can go and get a lump of wood, a couple of lumps of wood. And that there just uh, stops it from smashing you to bits when you've never done it before. There's blokes that's done heaps of this. You'll be bored by now, you can turn off and run away. Yeah, you just do that. Right, that's what I've got to take off there. This setup was set up 91, this axle with a mate. That's a uh, shower of rain coming there. But uh, yeah, so I just got to take that off. 
air tools out there to rain. I'll turn this off. Ah, still rain and it's why I haven't filmed much and doing any jobs much lately because it's just never stopped raining here. We've had flopping hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mills and I was just doing this. Ah, my old shed, she's filthy in here. I should have it in backed over there and doing it on that side, but here yeah, you can't get to it. But that's my fault. But yeah, you get the gist. I gotta pull that, there's two bolts in the back there gotta come out and because I've set this up years ago it's not exactly the most brilliant thing and me brake shoes there I'd love to go stainless steel but to set that up in stainless you're looking at 300 bucks each for the caliper another 300 dollars at least for the stainless rotor and maybe another 150 or 200 for the stub axle so it's just hideous it'd be a 1500 dollars to swap it over yeah I see all this flash new gear and it just I mean I don't know whether they're borrowing the money or what they're doing, but it just uh, blows me away the amount of money they spend. Or, whereas I just do this, and even a set of, of rotors there only bloody, oh gee, they're flat out being 70 bucks each or something. And then put a rebuild kit, and I get bloody four or five years out of the rotors. Anyway, let's see how we go. I'll just switch this off. You gotta um, start, you gotta pull this one here out. That lets the brake fluid out. Now I've got to undo this bolt here and this, this shoe will come off and then I'll check these bearings as well this time and hopefully when I pull them out I'll do them in this new this new grease here well it's not new I've used it as a different name years ago but it's um, MBL it's uh, copper grease I used to call it and it's oh look I don't know if you can read that but specs on it like it can handle 200 degrees constant temp it's uh, microscopic copper and lead particles in it. Yeah, so. But oh, gee, it works. So I'll be putting that in them. And then uh, that handles around the salt water too. But not that I ever put this as a tilting trailer. Right, eh? Hey, up there. She's cloudy out there. Wet. So I climb underneath there. I've got that on the stand. Give that a rock. Looks nice and solid now. I'll work on that. Pull that one out. Just let the brake fluid go. I'll re, I'll re top it up, pull that colour apart. Hopefully, it, it's not too bad. What are they like? Yeah, they're not too bad, I suppose. Okay, catch up. Look, guys, a good little tip if you got one is get in here and with the compressor. You're gonna gonna pull things apart and get the, that gun there and get in there and blow all the bloody surface stuff off as much around as you can, like. I forgot to say this trailer is heavily rust protected and that's it makes it a it makes them a bugger to work on but uh, I've had this seven eight nine years and the same with the boat and uh, you know it's like flopping it's still pretty good you know it would have rusted away buddy five years ago now they only get it even if they're galvanized and you wash them down you don't get long out of them this is still washed down and I do it every trip I come back and I'll, I'll prepare it I use a bit of sump oil on it sometimes as well as tactile and then go for a drive on a dusty road. We're running out of dusty roads around here and that just builds up this coating and it doesn't come off. But yeah, you gotta, when I put these all back together after they're washed, I'll get some uh, fisheline or tactile and I'll paint them. All right, I'll keep going. I just uh, haven't done it for a while, so I'll just poke along steady. I just gotta find the right spinners and keep at it. All right. Okay. I've undone this one here now, that's the bleed screw, and I've loosened the bolts that hold it on. Now, these two pins here, they hold the brake pads in, this pads in, with this locking wire across the back. You take them out, then what I do is I just get a steel bar like this, and I just tap on the, uh, the brake pads itself, which knock the piston back in which give it a bit of clearance so you can slide him off and then I'll undo the bolts and drop him out. He's nearly out that one. Mm. It's very dark I know I shouldn't be filming today but this is a, probably as good as day I've had for a long time but uh, I should have a light on a uh, torch or something. Then I'll do them but like I said this is HJ75 Land Cruiser running gear. <laughs> it's funny I've got HJ75 springs and because uh, they're the bigger ones and this actually is series 60 uh, 
braking gear. Yeah, and it's a bugger because it's got two small pistons and two large pistons. I should swap it over to 80, but uh, this does a good job for a while. I should poke around and get some stainless steel pistons for them. But uh, I'll see how they look this time. I get them out and I buff them up on the uh, stainless steel wheel and they come up like brand new. Yeah, all right, I'll just uh, put this over here. I'm not the world's best at this. I've been doing it for, doing my own gear now for 40 or 50 years, 40 years at least. You know, done hundreds of breaks for mates and other people. And see, so just tap that in. Tap those brakes in. Hopefully that's got enough now to get the hammer and just give it a tap in there and that's great. Slide out now with a bit of coaxing. There we go. Like these were new, so I know they're good brakes. They're good Bendex. Oh, look, I'm not, I'm not affiliated with anybody, but I use good four-wheel drive Bendex brakes. Find they're good. Used them for years. This is this is the world according to Tonk. You, you mechanics out there that make a living out of it, and you got, that, just look away now. I'm a bit rough, because this is my own gear. As long as it's safe going up the road, which it is. Well, to give you an idea, I took my old Toyota up to an engineer. He crawled around and couldn't believe how good a condition she was in. So, you know. There's um, how they come out. Now, the other thing is, I had that in my Toyota into a, uh, to get the tyres on it. And they told me that the injector pump was leaking. All the front end was falling out of it. I only just fully rebuilt it two years before. So I just get sick of local mechanics ripping me off. So I never go, I haven't been to one for flopping years. All right, hey, that's it. You take them out, give you a bit of room. See, they're not too bad, actually. But while I've got them off, I'll pull them out and rebuild them. And then I'll know, because, you know, I could be towing this up the cape or null and boy, who knows, here in a minute. All right, switch that off. Okay, right eh? These buggers come apart like that, and four bolts, bolt them together. A the little O-ring here sits in here. You just got to watch when you put them back together later. They sit there and another O-ring there. They come in the kit when you buy them. Now, I've got one out with a compressor. That's what your pistons look like. See how they go rusty around the edge there? That's why stainless steel ones would be good. I should replace these, but what I'll do is I'll get on the buffer and I'll buff these up. And they'll come up new looking. They only go in about halfway, and that seal seems to seal them off. But yeah, you just uh, clean them right up, get all that stuff off them. There's just a square square O-ring sits in that one, in each one. Yeah, so get in and clean them up. These are going to be, they might come out all right. They were stainless, it'd be perfect. You never have any trouble with them. You wouldn't worry if these boots flop and bug it up. They'd just keep working. But nah, that's too smart. Don't know how they even allow them in the country without being all stainless steel. But mind you, mind you, 30 years or 40 years ago when they made them, Ah, oh, stainless was around then. I just didn't want you to fix them. Uh, you can buy new ones and fit new ones if you want to. I'm not gonna. I've, I've buffed these up three or four or five, six times now. Like I said, I've had this trailer and these breaking set up here for, I don't know, 91 I think we fitted them up, mate and I. It was underneath another Cape York trailer we used to take up the Cape and the Gulf and then uh, put it under this trailer. Oh, I've had this thing eight or nine years, so it would have put it under here this axle, and uh, I've only got it set up for one and a half tonne. Oh, that's all we need, the old compressor to kick in. I've set it up for one and a half tonne, but oh, if I wanted to take it up to a engineer, and you'd get it taken up to two tonne easy. Just depends on these size of these rotors. I'm not sure if they're big enough for two tonne. I think they're only, uh, I'm not sure, I think they're bloody 300 mils. Yeah, 300 easy. 
might be 295s actually if I remember rightly. So I just don't know what the, but they're four pistons calipers. When I'm towing this and everything's working, you don't even know this trailer's behind you when you go to tow up, pull up. Of course the best brakes are the uh, electric over hydraulic over disc brakes. And uh, if you went stainless steel rotors and stainless steel calipers, <laughs> what a beautiful setup, especially for Toyota bearings. Oh, I've, I've towed this, it's been through the Go Golf Cape. Not sure if this one's been in the Kimberley, but it'll handle the Kimberley in its ease. Been to the Kimberley, but I went up in there in 88, but uh, up into Columbaroo. Always wanted to take this one up here, but Western Australia is flopping the rag and the chain as usual. Won't let anybody in or out much. Yeah, but that's what you've got to do now. I've got to get these pistons out like that. It doesn't matter up here, see? Up, this O-ring just sits there. That's where the last of the O-ring pulls up, just on that side, and that's why it's pitted. So in there is clean. That's all in the oil, so it doesn't rust. Out here, you can buff that up and it'll still seal because it seals from there back and they're fully pushed in. So see, you see your O-ring there, the time you get that in there, and it's only gotta go in far enough to get your brakes on so it never goes in all the way. Let me clean up, as long as they don't leak, that'll be fine, all right? Tonks Tips is not about having brand new everything. Tonks Tips is just about fixing things up on a budget, getting it working so you get the job done. If you don't agree with what I'm doing, I don't care. You you do your own thing. This is, this is the world according to me. I'm not going to spend $1,000, $1,500 on this trailer just to take it up north or use it a couple of times a year. The brakes are good enough the way they are. As long as I clean them up and put them back together, they're fine. They work great. Better than those hand cable things, mechanical ones. They're the, just the biggest way. Look at that, another big shower of rain coming. Uh, all right, I better get this gear in out of the rain. Okay, back again. I don't know if you can see anything here. See? Shine that on there. Now, there's my workbench. I just make do with what I've got. It's a 320 litre freezer. Yes, it's still working. <laughs> it's got me bait and everything in it. I've just put the vice up there and I'll just drop those into the vice. Then I've got a fair a centre fence and pliers there and I'll try and get hold of the lip of these things. If not, I've got some vice clamps. I may have to put it on the ground to hold it, make a bit more room in here. Other than that, if they don't come out, you get onto them with the um, butane torch and just into them with the heat. And uh, if there's any rust or any build up on them, that just burns it off and they pop, they'll come out a lot easier then. I may have to do that soon, but yeah. But I just know if I clean these up and put them back together like I have so many times before, they'll still work fine. And uh, yes, I know I should put new pistons in them or put new ones on them, but you clean these up. See, look at that one there. He's already cleaned up, not too bad. Just a little bit of pitting, but like I said, it it um, just cleans up. All it is is a, it, it just gets a bit of rust here on these pistons and they stop and they seize against that part here, just in there. You've got to get in with some emery tape and I'll um, inside that piston there as well and clean all that up as well inside the chamber. But those big O-rings, they, they seal really well. All right. I'll leave you to it and I'll get onto it and clean these up and pull them out if I can. If not, like I said, you get onto them with a the little gas burner and you burn them out. You do that outside, I could see. <laughs> There's one, two, three, four jerry cans full of fuel there. So you make sure if you strike any matches in this shed, you're outside. Um, yeah, one of these little butane torches that goes onto the top of those. They're really good. I use them for soldering as well. Oh, this is me bits and pieces. There's stuff here everywhere. I know I should clean it up, but then I never find anything. Yeah, okay, I'll keep going. And see, sometimes here too, I undo that. You mightn't see that, but you get that in there. If you can't get them out, I get that and I put it in the vise and clamp it in the vise just there and you twist it steadily. And that'll just, and that gets hold of them and works them out. I'll see how I go. But you get them in here, I'll wind the old vice out. It's just, no, nah, she's not quite big enough to do it like I used to be able to do with the bigger ones. And you just clamp them up there a little bit, and you just only need a little bit of movement. Oh, yeah, she's moving. Yeah, you get him in the, and you just keep working your backwards and forwards. And like I say, you clamp him in there, see? And then that vice there, and then you just wriggle him. Wiggle that backwards and forwards. See how he's moving? 
and I just got to do it again, but you just put him in the vice like that, clamp him gently, then you just wiggle him, and he just pops out. I just pulled that one out, he just fell out. He just come out easy. So you just put him in that vice there, and um, get him at the right angle. And you can just, the bigger ones are better, they fit in there nicer, but you just sit them in there, and up, up and do it, and then you wiggle them out. Right, eh? See, this one was completely seized. You squirt a little bit of CRC in them, on them. And see now here, he's just so moving easy now. And you just keep working on him. And he'll just, you keep working on him and pull him back a little bit. And you just don't get cranky with him. And you'll get them out and clean them up. You get them working again. Okay, I've jumped along a bit. I've pulled the uh, stub back, I've pulled the um, hub off. And I've re-greased them with the uh, new copper grease. Now it says on here, don't you, it's just a thin application of it. And what I've known of it, that's all it needs. I've, uh, I've washed all the other grease out of them with the petrol, cleaned them right up, let them dry, got a clean rag, wiped them down, they sound beautiful. And the first thing you notice is when you turn them, it's just, the whole thing just feels beautiful. And what I've noticed with this grease is you can tighten them a little bit more tighter. See, they've got no chatter in the bearing race. Just beautiful. I've done the other side. I knocked another seal that I had in here that was in good condition. And because uh, the old seal was buggered. The other seal, she fell to bits. And see, that's how, me that's how they're done. It's uh, bolted on there with eight high tensile bolts. And on the back of that, there's a little recess comes into that, what is it, 15, 16 mil plate on the back of this plate. One comes out and down like that, and the other goes in and down. So all these bolts do is actually hold it on, just the same as on a Toyota, and all the weight's taken on that piece of lathed in bit that goes into this bit of material here. I had these done up years ago, and I'm not the first one to do them. I poached this off. These are all the trailers up the Cape were running these. Uh, when I first went up there in 82, 87, they had the back springs of Land Cruisers in them. I had a HJ47s and, and uh, laid up on all the trailers up there. And I thought, oh, how good's that? And then I noticed over the years they run around with them for years. And I used to carry one of them as a spare. And then from 1991 to now, I've never bent one. <laughs> Or used it so I give up I actually started I never even carry a spare spring but um, I have got a spare and maybe if I go up to Clumberoo or something I might carry a spare stub axle get it great and done up I have what one here somewhere but I just haven't carried it with me yeah so I'm just about to put that back on these over here I've polished these up they've come up pretty good now Good enough to seal anyway for the brakes. It's taken all, it just cleans them up. That one there, I spray them with a bit of CRC and tomorrow before I put them back together, I'll, uh, I'll clean them down in petrol. You don't want it reacting with the uh, brake fluid. Uh, that grease and that, so. Just gonna put this hub back on here, tighten the bearings up, lock her back up. I gotta get another little dust cap thing. I might even just clean it up and uh, put some sicker on there, but it does help to have a, a new gasket on it, paper gasket. I just gotta go down to the shop and get one tomorrow. But I know I've jumped ahead a bit, but this is pretty boring stuff, packing bearings. Everybody knows how to pack bearings. But that's what I'm doing. I've already done, put new bushes in them, so they last pretty well. I did a trip last year with her. Yeah, so, all right. Normally I'd fill that whole hub up with the other grease. And when I pulled this grease out, I should have showed you, it was just black. It was horrible. So I've, I've not been happy with this, this other grease I've been using for a long time, but this copper grease, I know when we used to do it on the farm bearings years ago, oh, it was magical stuff. Considering when I put these on here, they'll only run a little bit over warm. Yeah, so all right. Ah, oh, morning, guys. Craig Thompson here. Started again another day. I've just got to... Um, just went around and got some parts from uh, Slips Autos in Karoi, here in Queensland. Uh, I must point out I'm not sponsored by anybody. I, if you buy a few parts off them there, you get 10% or 8% or whatever they give you a discount if you keep buying. I've been buying off them for years. So uh, they always give me whatever it is, 5 or 10%. Not 
not like trade or anything, but um, yeah, but see this flange here, uh, because I hit them here with a hammer to get the cones out, now I've got to get it and uh, I'll pop that off again. I only just put it on there in case it rained last night. I'll uh, get it and I'll grind it with an angle grinder just to smooth it up to take the any of the imperfections out of it. Like I said, I've put this the disc back on with the new type grease in it, repacked the bearings. I just like I said, I went round and I ordered the uh, kits for the um, they're coming tomorrow for the disc calipers. I would have loved to put uh, stainless steel pistons in them, but uh, you can't get them. I should get them made from someone, but what I've got in the shed, I've got another old set. I might look at uh, getting someone to make them up for me. You get them spun up on the lathe. Got to see what they want for them. Someone around will do them. But yeah, all right, so I just went and got some brake fluid, a couple of bits and pieces, so I'll, um, I'll just take that off and show you what I'll do with that to clean them up. I mean, you're not supposed to hit them here. I've done it for 40 years and never broken one. But I'm not running big horsepower. My old 18Z 80 series, old 2 H diesels and that. You just poke along with them steady. But otherwise, these cones are buggers that get out. All right, I'll do that and I'll, I'll show you what I've done when I'm finished. Okay, that's what I've done. See how I've grinded it there? And on this side, I just took them off. Makes it give you a flat surface to see it. Like, it's not imperative on here because this is more just a cover. If that had the axle on it, um, it's more to seal. So that cover sits on and seals. But I've just, they had a big axle in here and I've just cut that off with a drop saw and ground it down to make that into a cover for these bearings because I'm using the hubs. But I'll just, uh, I whack a little bit of Sikaflex or um, gasket on it. Now this is, this is, uh, you know, this is Toyota's to tonk, Tonks tips on Toyota's, you know. what If you're going to do it by the book, you don't follow my rules. But, uh, you know, I've been working on these things all my life. I bought my first Hilux in 1982 and I've been doing all my own mechanical ever since. So, you know, 30, 40 years I've been working on Toyotas and I love their gear. It's simple and it works. So, yeah, all right, I'm just going to put a bit of, clean that up, put a bit of gasket goo and another and a gasket on it. One of these gaskets here. These little green fellas. I went round and bought a few before. I don't know whether to put one or two on. I'll probably just put one with a bit of Sikaflex. All right, and then um, I'll put screw that cover back on, put the cone washers and everything back on. That can sit there. Then I'll rip the wheel off the other side and repeat the process, pull that um, brake caliper off because, I, like I said, the parts aren't coming until tomorrow. I may even sit the wheel back on this side just to give me a bit of protection and put a couple of nuts on and then steal those bits of wood and put on the other side. And just, like I said, I've given these a buff up. They're not too bad. Would have been great to have them in stainless, but um, this is what I use, this stainless steel buffer. I just hold them and get into them, hold them in the vise, give them a good buffing. They still have got little bits of pits on them, but that piece from about, oh, from there, just there near that pit back is only, that's what stays inside the piston, so it's not marked. The same with this one. That All that from there back stays inside. And even if it uh, comes up and rides up on this a little bit, because it's all smoothed out, they never leak. I've never had one piston leak yet, and I've used them. This is, they've been rebuilt. And actually what I do is I go around here, right on this edge here, and I grind that edge off along here. And I take that little bit off. Oh, it might only be a couple of thou. And I just, it's about that first three or four mil, and I grind that down, and that stops it building the crap building up and seizing them, and you get, oh, you get a lot longer out of them. All the little tricks of the trade I've learnt that I've done to them, like the other people, they just throw new ones in them. Well, you can do that. They're 30 bucks each or 40 bucks each or whatever they are for a new piston. But the trouble is, the same thing will happen. Give them, if you're on a trailer like this, give it 12 or 18 months, and they start seizing it too. I get three or four years, three years out of them, and I just rebuild them again. If I'm doing a big trip, like I could be going to Gove with this or going to up the Cape, I just pull them off. It only takes me a bloody day, if that, and I just do them. It's got really good brakes, fantastic brakes then. If the uh, rotors look buggered, I rip them off when I'm doing the bearings and I put new rotors on. 
the bearings look buggered. I've put new bearings in them, but this trailer, I built both this axle, got an engineer to lay it all up and everything for us, and we welded it together. Built that in 1991. That there is the second set of bearings in that time, in like 30 years. It's had two sets of bearings in it because, because of the tilt and trailer, it doesn't go in the water and the bearings don't get any salt water in them. It's only when you're going up like last year in April, the roads were really flooded and uh, not actually the crossings. The crossings were good, but the actual roads, the ruts, I was just driving through you know, a few hundred kilometres of just dirt dirt and water, the water was up over the bonnet the whole way. I was a bit worried that my snorkel might have got water in it. I would have actually liked to turn it around, but luckily I've got the snorkel head is down right and you and the, that forces them up and when the water comes in it, it goes around the edges and it doesn't go down the middle as much. And uh, but yeah okay I just do this. Okay guys, I've got to repeat the process. I've taken the wheel off, chocked it up with some blocks of wood. And this is just, you know, a bit of safety. It's still got stands underneath there. A stand. Now I've just got to get in here, I'll get in with the compressor and I'll blow a bit of the dirt and that away from that. Then I'll rip this one off on the other side, like I did on the other side. Pull, break this one down. Now, this is what I forgot to do. When you get these things, I'll show you. Before you go and rebuild them, I'll try and rebuild them. Make sure you get a 10 mil spanner. And find a 10 mil spanner might be the tr crazy bit here. Start again, get a 10 mil spanner and make sure it, your, your bleed screw comes out. I've had these, you go to a trouble, you rebuild them all and you can't get that out. And you snap them off. Yeah, that bleed screw there. You make sure that comes out. I'm gonna get that. Get that. There you go. See, I always make sure I don't do them up too tight. And you get him, and you get a bit of wire. You get that little cover on the top. It'll come with all. It'll come with new ones in the kit. Pull that bloody heap off. And you get a bit of wire and shove down that and make sure they're clean in that in that thing. Otherwise you go to trouble rebuilding them. And if that's not fluffing, blow all that out. Get a bit of wire. A bit of old tie wire. You line up and you get it down there, because these things just clog up with dirt. Just make sure that hole there is empty. Well, a couple of hours later, I've got got them all, um, that one pulled apart too. He's down there, just waiting for parts tomorrow. And uh, pulled him out and repacked the bearings. Oh, people will probably criticise me, but I use the same seals. They all look good. I shoved them onto the shaft. They were tight and felt good. There was no grooves in the shaft. I just cleaned them up with petrol and re put the grease around the, the old seals. Repack the old bearings, they look good. Like this trailer only does. Flat out doing five, six thousand a year, ten thousand. And those big heavy bearings, they're designed for a truck that weighs three tonne, and this thing's got a maximum of a tonne and a half on it, so they're, they're just idling. So I don't have to worry about them too much. And when I pull them out, they look beautiful. I just put that new copper grease in them, and it says on it not to use as much, which is good. I just pack them in and I'll uh, see how they go. I'll get, the, uh, get them back together tomorrow. And uh, brake pads are like new, but yeah, they're there. Oh well, all right, I'll, uh, I'll show you tomorrow putting them back together. Catch ya. Well, again, guys, it's, um, the parts are turned up. I got them from this mob through uh, Slips Auto Parts and Croy. Like I said, I'm not uh, sponsored or anything by them, but they got me these ProTech ones. I think they're about $50, $60 for the two kits to do both. Now, make sure you get the, um, wipe this out nice and clean. And I blow them out with a compressor with that on the end there, blow all the, 
blow down each all the holes, make sure there's no dirt in them, give them a good clean out, get in there and wipe them out. I even got a cotton bud here. I get down inside and get in those grooves and wipe them grooves out with a cotton bud. But yeah, I'm just gonna go about now. What I'll do is I'll just wipe a little, little bit of brake fluid here, just before I put them in, just on that, around that edge, around these. That then gives them a little bit of lubrication to slide past. You gotta pull these apart and you get the square O-rings they are, and they slide in into those slots. Then you put, put them all together, each side, put the, the boots and the rings on. I think I've got onto a chap that might be able to do stainless steel ones. So, might take me a few months to track him down and get him to do some, because he's got to do a run of them. And I might even get someone put in my 80 Series 2 uh, stainless steel pistons in the front of the 80 Series as well, because I do a fair bit on the beach. Once you do that, I'll have no trouble with it then, if I can get stainless steel ones for her. Um, but, uh, all right, I'll, uh, I'll leave it with you. <laughs> I have forgot to say, when we built this, this trailer years ago, everything come from the wreckers. The spindle were all second hand, the, the hubs were second hand, the springs were second hand. And see those little coils here? I put extra coils in it. I found, I picked them up at the dump. Uh, so that axle I made up for a few bucks. The m most thing it cost me was getting the engineer to, uh, to get the plates and turn them up. Yeah, okay. I've got these, these are Aussie made, a bit of Aussie made rubber i got for the mud flaps. Got from Tawanton, Noosa. All right, I'll just, I'll go here and uh, I'll put them together and I don't know if you can see in there, but just got to, I just fitted the new O-rings just in there. And that one too. I've got it, I've got the brake caliper on the other side. He's already done. And that's these are these square O rings I was talking about. They got to go inside the caliper, uh, down in here. They go in there. The big one goes in that one, fits down in that slot down in there. Make sure it's clean. And the small one goes in there, and that's what seals your your um, brake fluid in the, behind the piston. But they're all nice and cleaned up. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll leave you with it again. This is rough and ready tonks, flopping tips. But uh, I don't know any other way, so I just bung them together as good as I can, clean them up as good as I can. Um, yeah, okay, catch you later. Sorry I skipped so many processes, but yeah, just gotta put the brake shoes in there now. Brake pads on that side, and this side, I've already got him on. But yeah, all right. I know. Okay, all finished. Yeah, oh well. Thanks very much. Don't forget to subscribe and push a like if you like it. Catch us later. Thank you.